Hey, Tonya, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Tonya is one of our really good librarian friends. She's visiting us from Humble. Um, yeah, I see you. Thank you for coming in. Hey, Jeannie, nice to see you. Gracie, Anna, guys, if y'all will let us know where you are visiting from, we've got Abdo family and friends on and they want to know where you are visiting from. They want to know um, what you love about Abdo. So while we are letting everybody into the webinar, uh, please pop into the chat. Um, let us know where you are visiting from and what you love about Abdo. Gracie in Houston, we got San Antonio, more Houston. I always like to see who's visiting from the furthest uh, place. We've had, what is it, Brie? Hawaii, I think, was our, uh, our furthest. Hey, Jenny. Jeannie. Got some Brenham. I saw you, Charlotte, somewhere. There you are, Charlotte. Very good. Missy Malo is on. Thank you. Okay, you're Springfield, Massachusetts. There we go. It's on, y'all. We got to beat Massachusetts here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> We got Dallas area, Mansfield, Texas. Welcome everybody. We're gonna give it another few minutes. Um, we've got a lot of people pouring in right now. So we are going to give it a few minutes for everyone to get in. Northeast Pennsylvania, and you love the Checkerboard Library Series. Thank you, Alex. Wow. Cape Cod, okay. More Houston, Jenny loves the Abdo nonfiction. I actually got Jenny a quote today. So she is ready to go. <laughs> Caroline says she loves the Abdo Hilo readers Oop. and all of the current topics. Yes, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Yes. Nieder and Tony, in the cone of uncertainty. I was just telling everybody how it seems like our webinars start the day that the hurricanes hit. So <laughs> I'm getting a little rain here. I'm sure you are too. So thank you for joining us um, and we hope that you stay very safe here. So. Oh, we got somebody tuning in from a junior high football game. That's always fun. Texas. Yes, Jeannie, we are going to pray for our Louisiana neighbors. Thank you. Okay, Paula, what did you say? With to see, you want to see that quote too that I gave Jenny? <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll get that to you. And Jenny, yes, I said Brenham. I think I saw Charlotte Polk in here from Brenham. She's in. Um, so she's our attendee from Brenham here. Jenny's hometown, very good. All right, guys, we've still got some more people popping in, but thank y'all so much for joining us tonight. I'm so excited to introduce you um, to our Abdo family and friends here in a little bit. Um, as soon as I see that ticker kind of slowing down with everybody coming in, then we will get started, probably give it another minute or two. We've got... Okay, um, Holly from Newmarket, Alabama says that her students love Abdo Spotlight books. I know Holly. Hi, Holly. You know Holly? Okay. I do. Very good. <laughs> I've had dinner with Holly. Okay. Very good. There were other people there too. <laughs> <laughs> San Antonio, Houston. All right, guys. Thank y'all so much for joining us. Like I said, we're going to give it one more minute. And Helen Dawkins says that she's from a suburb of Austin and Abdo is fantastic. So oh, thank you. Wonderful. Oh, and she says that Holly says that Monty, that was the dinner where she showed you a picture Hank. of her dog, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Here's a Virginia Fredericks. Oh. Norma Byrne Elementary School. Thank you for joining us from all the way from Virginia. All right, guys. I am going to get us started. I think we have um, capped off with the with the main flow here. So I'm going to start sharing my screen and we will get started here. All right. <clears throat> So thank you everybody. Welcome to another webinar in the Literacy for Texas series. We're excited that you could be here tonight. 
My name is Jamie Garcia. I'm the owner of Literacy for Texas. We are a library and literacy consulting company based in uh, Houston. We help all sorts of librarians, libraries, and literacy advocates in the Texas area get great books into students' hands. And we're excited tonight to introduce you to one of our favorite publishers, Abdo Publishing. So welcome to our webinar, Meet the Publishers with Abdo. I uh, just want to start with a couple of housekeeping rules. Um, if you've been to our webinars, you know this. If not, here's a quick recap. Um, any specific questions that you have for our panelists tonight, go ahead and pop those into the Q&A so that we can better keep track. General chatter, we're going to be sharing some links. If you've been on our webinars before, you know Bree is there um, getting all of the great links into our chat for you. Um, there's going to be free books, free prize opportunities, so really monitor that chat. We want you to be active with us tonight. Um, if you want to continue the conversation about all things great with ABDO or anything in the Lone Star um, State as far as literacy, we do have a Facebook group called the Lone Star Librarians. Um, we've, at, we've been asked before if out-of-state librarians can join. Absolutely. Um, we just like, you know, the, the alliteration and we're a Texas-based company, so please join our group. And last but not least, since we are highlighting a couple of individual panelists tonight, be sure to choose the speaker option so that you are viewing the speaker that is actually speaking. Um, we'd like to see all of our, our pretty faces on this webinar, but we also want to highlight our panelists that we have on, the, on, on tonight. So first, um, before I introduce our panelists, I just wanted to tell you what I personally love about ABDO. Um, I do truly believe that they have the best biography selection um, for any K-12 publisher. They have an extensive collection. Um, it is very well thought out and there's unique biographies on there like my favorite, the female foodie entrepreneurs. Um, they also have licensed fiction with Marvel and Disney. So if you're looking for anything like the new um, graphic novels from Disney, they have those out. My other favorite collection is Duchess Harris. Um, she is an author that um, creates authoritative content with scholarly expertise. And she the right on a lot of the social justice, anti-racism books that um, students and libraries are craving right now. And then also um, I had to put up some of our Texans here. Um, for sports, it's very hard to find individual athletes and also individual teams and ABDO does that really well. So if you are looking at a book for the Houston Texans or the Astros or whatever your favorite team is, they're going to have it. Another um, thing that I like to point out is remember that you have a choice where you're purchasing and we encourage you to purchase direct. So whether that be through Literacy for Texas or through your ABDO direct representative, you're really going to maximize your budget and expand your um, purchasing power if you order directly through the company. So for their ebooks this year, they do have buy one, get one free. So that's buy one ebook, get that second ebook free. They also have the option to where you can combo your print and your digital. So buy the ebook, get the print book for free. And that's what Jenny got earlier today, Paula. Um, for their print books, they have one of the best print specials in the industry. Spend $1,500, you're getting 25 free books of your choice. That's about 500 extra dollars that you get to spend on books for your library. So without further ado, I would love to introduce our ABDO panelists tonight. I have um, a wonderful relationship with this company and I'm so excited that um, they offered to, to be on the webinar with us. So I'd like to first uh, introduce Paul ABDO. Last name might sound familiar. He is the Executive Vice Pre President of ABDO Publishing. Give us a wave there, Paul. <laughs> And you also have Grace Hansen. Grace is one of the managing editors and an ABDO author. You might see her name on a lot of the ABDO kids books. Um, she's the brainchild behind that series and that line as well. And then also Monty Keel. He's the vice president, direct sales of content, uh, of vice president of direct sales and content. Um, he's my direct liaison to ABDO and I mainly work through him. So thank you, Paul, Grace, and Monty for being on. And then of course, we have Bree. She's going to be popping into the chat with us um, to, again, keep everything flowing and get you all of those great links. So I'd first like to introduce Paul, our Executive Vice President, and he is going to lend us um, a little bit of the history of ABDO and share with you um, what a great family company this is. So Paul, take it on over. All right. Thank you very much, Jamie. We are just so excited to be here. It's been as we all know, a, a tough year, tough school year, uh, started last spring. 
and a uh, big part of our company is going down to Texas and going to the TLA and we really miss that. So we are excited to be here with all of you. And uh, of course there's people from other states, Alabama, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, so Virginia, and probably a few others that I missed. But again, thank you so much, Jamie. Jamie's been so wonderful to work with. I can't tell you how great she is uh, for her customers and for us as a publisher. So uh, Texas, you have one of the best in the business, no doubt about it. And uh, we're so fortunate to get to work with her. We're also so fortunate to get to work with all of you librarians. Like I said, we miss you. Uh, we know you do so much and now you're under some uh, terrible circumstances, something that we've never experienced in our, our history as a company and I'm sure you as a, as a librarian. So uh, our prayers are with you and we hope you're staying safe and healthy and uh, the students are doing well. And tonight we're gonna try to have some fun, make it light, we're gonna talk about the history of the company. We've got Grace and Monty here, uh, two wonderful people that do a lot for schools and books and, and produce some great products. So uh, we're gonna try to keep it light, light, like I said, and have some fun. So I'll start with the uh, history of our company. We uh, started our company in 1985. Uh, it was started by my dad, uh, Joe Abdo, and three of his daughters and um, I'm the youngest of seven and so they started this in 1985. My dad um, is a Le Lebanese immigrant. His parents came over. Uh, he's a son of Lebanese immigrants. His parents came over in the early 1900s. Uh, they were sent to Minnesota of all places when they came to New York and uh, settled in Mankato. There was a large Lebanese community and uh, my grandparents never spoke English. I never had a full conversation with them, but uh, they did push us to books. They pushed us to education. They pushed my dad to make sure he gets educated. And that was the biggest thing in our, our lives. And uh, my dad loved books. He uh, always had a book on his nightstand, always had a book in the living room. He was reading multiple books at a time. We talked books. So uh, one of his dreams was to uh, get into the book publishing business and he bought a small book publishing company and, uh, and changed it to Abdo and Daughters with my three, three sisters. Uh, here's my sister Lynn at one of our first shows. So in 1985, we started with, uh, I believe 12 books is what we started with. Uh, and here's our warehouse, our first warehouse. Uh, I remember as a kid in junior high, picking books and sending orders and sending some orders to Texas. And uh, so I started young in the business, but um, it, was, it was always a family business. For many years, it was just my dad and the, the three daughters. And um, it was some, some good times, some tough times. Uh, but my dad kept pushing along, along with uh, his daughters, and to, today we're doing roughly uh, 800 titles a year. Uh, this is our booth now here in, uh, this is in Texas at a TLA show, uh, 2019, the last TLA we were at. Um, in the early 90s, uh, my brother Jim and I joined the company, and uh, we added a uh, uh, fiction titles and this is I think Jamie was just talking about this this is our spotlight uh, division we started with uh, Marvel was our first uh, one and this is my sister and I with spotlight and then we uh, worked with Disney Warner Brothers uh, we just got Stranger Things and the good thing is and Jamie knows this very well we can now sell them as ebooks which is huge. So we can sell the Disney product as these eBooks. We couldn't in the past, and we just started that uh, in the last six months. So it's been a, it's been great for us. It's been great for school. So we're really excited about that. Uh, so we now have uh, many divisions. We have, uh, as you know, a lot of nonfiction, a lot of fiction. Um, here is our warehouse. Uh, now this is in Mankato. Um, so we have Abdo Zoom. Abdo Publishing, Magic Wagon, 
Spotlight, and of course, Abdo Digital, which provides all the ebooks and uh, databases. So the growth of our company has, uh, after 35 years, we now have 100 plus employees. Here's a picture of orders being sent out. Um, we have 100 plus employees, many uh, independent reps, distributors, and of course, a third generation. Um, we have four of them are in there right now in this picture. This is a play on obviously Stranger Things. <laughs> um, so yeah, we have uh, a great, still a family business, and uh, but we even we we continue to be a family company, and even with a hundred plus employees, everybody is an integral part of our company, from uh, packing the books to sending the orders out to editing to proofreading to writing uh everybody is part of our family and it's that's the the legacy my dad always wanted he wanted a book company and he wanted a family business and that meant everybody uh now here's my dad probably two years ago with the three daughters and uh unfortunately my uh, father passed away last year and he was still a big part of our company. Very, uh, uh, not day to day, I wouldn't say, but he was there with advice, with ideas, with uh, uh, book ideas. But the biggest thing always was remember the customer. What we're trying to do is get the best books to the libraries and get the best books in kids' hands so that they can learn to read and get educated. Everybody deserves the chance to have a book in their hands and to learn. And that was his big, big uh, push to us and to continue to keep it going. This is our entire family. Um, this is not too long after my dad's funeral. And uh, one thing you'll probably notice is that we all follow my dad's hairline. <laughs> and, uh, but this was, uh, yeah, this was last, not, not that long ago. So uh, I just want to point out my mom's in this picture and she was a huge part of our family business as well. She uh, is the mother of seven kids. I'm the youngest and she was always there uh, giving us support, helping us uh, come into the warehouse and uh, she was right there with my dad. So it is a true family business. And again, we are so, so appreciative to all of you and Jamie and uh, we wish you guys nothing but the best. And I'm very hopeful that I will see you in the near future. I just I heard that TLA was canceled, which breaks our heart. But we will get down there. We will uh, we'll get through this together. And uh, thank you again, librarians, because you do so much. And we are so happy to be working with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. I think um, I, I have known the family history, but that definitely put it into a unique and personal experience. So thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, you know, I, I, I've always known since I started working with y'all how unique and special the company was. And that's just um, proof to show you guys that they really truly are a family company and they do care about um, not only you, but the students and, and like Paul said, you know, uh, readers and being educated. So thank you so much, Paul. We appreciate that. Thank All you. right, guys, I that there was going to be um, opportunities for some pop quiz and some prizes. So this is a race to the chat. Um, if you can let us know what year the, okay, very, I didn't even get the question out, but um, it looks like Paula, um, you were first to respond 1985. We kind of threw you a softball there, but yes, that was the year that ABDO um, was published. And, um, you know, so a, a great legacy that um, Mr. ABDO created and that the family is continuing on. So. Uh, Paul, I'll get you some goodies in the mail here. So next time you see a pop quiz, um, be ready to answer in the chat here. So, all right, we are going to move on to our next panelist. Um, if you have 
ever seen how beautiful an Abdo Kids book is. If you ever wanted to know how a children's book is written, Grace Hansen is the managing editor and an author at Abdo, and she's here to share with us kind of all the details on um, from basically thought to publishing how books come to life. So Grace, welcome. Thank you for being here. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen again. If you put it on panelist view, um, you will get a, a nice view of Grace there. And Grace, thank you so much for being here. Take it on over. Thank you, Jamie. Hi, everyone. Like Jamie said, my name is Grace Hansen. I work at Abdo mainly as an editor for our Abdo Zoom Core Library, Kids Core, and Sports Zone titles. I also write and help manage our Abdo Kids division. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit how we, about how we choose titles and how those titles become books. I'm going to focus on Abdo Kids, obviously, since I am most familiar with that process. Um, I read a book um, called Public Speaking for Dummies a little over a year ago to prep for another speaking engagement actually in Texas and it said to present information in lists to keep the audience engaged. So I'm going to give you the eight steps to making an Abdo Kids book. So step one is the title meeting. This is where the executives including the editor-in-chief, sales rep manager, and distributors manager aka Paul and Monty and another come together with the editors to choose titles for the upcoming season. At the first Abdo Kids meeting that took place several years ago, we got to talk about things like the design of the books and our goals for Abdo Kids. And the first goal was to make the books as accessible to young readers as possible. We wanted them to be interesting and educational with a very large trim size, great colorful photographs and a simple large font for easy reading. And our second goal was to fill in any need that the market had. And still today, the most important question we ask ourselves is what have we heard from our customers and from our sales reps? So we are as informed as possible by the market when we choose our titles and actually many great book ideas come directly from librarians. Uh, for example, we often heard from librarians and educators that there was a big need for low level biographies which is why Abdo Kids has so far published 24 history maker biography books. Here's just one of them. Uh, we also want our titles to be of interest readers, but they also must support curriculum, state and national standards, and teaks, of course. On another note, we like to be reactive to what's happening in the world so that young readers and libraries have the resources that they need. I think we were one of the first to come out with the low level coronavirus series. So it's a good resource to have in your library. Very accessible and cute. Um, and after we choose and finalize series names and titles, we move on to creating covers. And in today's world with the competition of other books and electronics, first impressions are everything. And I want young readers to be drawn to our books. So the covers have to be fun and exciting. Obviously you guys probably know that cat books have been and always will be extremely popular in this industry. So when Abdo Kids first started, we knew we needed a cat series, um, but it had to stand out and not look like all the others on the market. And one way to do that was obviously with the covers. So we cropped their little faces and I just think that this is a great cover and probably kids would love to pick this up. Um, then there are the subjects that might not be as exciting as cats and dinosaurs and other cool topics. Um, books about science and math are extremely important, but they don't do you any good if your kids aren't picking them up and checking them out. So our series like Beginning Science and Measure It were some of our tougher challenges there. Um, the topics were ones that kids might like, but the initial cover concepts started out as a little bit boring. So we decided to feature cute little kids dressed in vintage clothes, and then they're standing in front of a chalkboard and the topic is illustrated in chalk and these are just still some of my favorite that we've done so far. Um, and then Measure It had a similar challenge. And so we chose covers that kids could relate and be drawn to like robots and Legos. So they're grabbing a robot book, but they're learning about math concepts. Um, step three is research. When I research, I use Abdo's vetted and archived data. I go to libraries, of course. I use respected internet sources and the Encyclopedia of Britannica. 
One unique research tool I used for writing beginning science actually was a YouTube channel that was created, written, and hosted by actual scientists. So I knew I was getting a lot of good, concise information, and I knew it was also authoritative. Step four is, of course, writing. And a 200-word book, can, you can open it and think, oh, not much went into this. But I promise you, it's, it can be a little bit more difficult than meets the eye, because writing for beginning readers takes a lot of thought and care. You have to condense information from sometimes vast and complicated topics. For instance, I had to first understand what magnetism was, and then I had to simplify it and then write it so a first grader could also understand it. Uh, I also had to be aware of the words that I'm choosing, and the Children's Writer's Word Book has been a really great tool for me for writing. It just lists all like tons and tons of words and what grade range that they're in. And if it's in a different grade range than what you want, it suggests other good words for you. Uh, while writing, I also have to obviously be aware of AR. I make sure each book is appropriately leveled for the reader even before it's placed in the layout. And I do that by checking my manuscript with online with Renaissance's ATOS program. Step five, once the manuscripts are all finished and approved, we move on to photo research, which is a fun and challenging step, a lot like covers. You want the photos to be fun, you want them to be engaging. Um, so when searching for photos, we use everything from stock photo sites to editorial websites like Getty and AP, and even the Library of Congress, which has a really impressive photo collection. The goal in AbdoKids especially is that the photo supports the text and then aids in comprehension on top of that. So if we're talking about something more complicated, a labeled image is another thing that I love to feature because it's just a great tool to assist kids in learning and especially for those who are visual learners. Step six is the editorial process. This is when the book leaves me and goes to one of our editors in the company and each editor is given a checklist um, and what to look for. And then after that, the books are packaged for print. And once the book has printed, we move on to step seven, which is creating content for abdokids.com. If your library has abdokids books, you probably know that in the back of each book, there's a code that allows your readers to access more content online. Abdokids.com is safe and secure. Our team creates all the word searches, the coloring pages, we track down the web links and the videos to display on the site. And then we also work with a, another company to create a really unique and cute simple craft that's also for free on the website. Um, the final step is step eight. And that is when we work with our Spanish translator, Maria, to also produce a Spanish title for every Abdo Kids book that we do. Um, this is an example of one of our cute little Spanish titles. It's also cute in English just because quotas are really cute. <laughs> um, she's a native speaker. She's extremely thorough. When we first connected with her, she was a immersion teacher and now she's studying to become a full-time translator. And she's, since we've worked with her, she's just traveled the world and translated for ABDO. And she's been in Dubai, she's been in Spain, she's been everywhere. So she has a pretty incredible story, but um, she works with us to create the best low-level Spanish titles in the industry, and we're super proud to create great Spanish nonfiction for young readers. So Abdo publishes, as Paul said, a lot of books per year. Abdo Kids alone has published 629 individual titles as of today, and more are on the way. Um, each of them is carefully created to meet AR national standards and to inspire reading. We want to help build young readers with you and offer books at an age at an age range where reading can be have a tremendous impact and that impact would be much less if we didn't have librarians supporting their communities and people in the industry like jamie who really care about you and your libraries and this zoom people is just filled with people who work really hard to get books in the hands of young people and while you're our customers you're also definitely our team and I just want to iterate, reiterate that our best ideas come from you and no one knows what your readers need more than you guys do. And so if you ever have a need or just an idea, always pass it along to us, pass it along to Jamie. We love hearing from you. So I really appreciate your time. And um, it's really a gift to connect with you, especially in 2020. 
Um, and I'll pass it back on to Jamie now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Grace. That was a great breakdown. Um, I do see a few questions for you in the chat that we will come back to guys um, at the end of the uh, webinar because I want to make sure that um, we have enough time to share um, with Monty here. But thank you so much, Grace. Um, it's always very interesting to see, again, start to finish how a book is made. And I think that um, you know, hearing that sometimes the librarian's ideas actually come to fruition in the form of a book um, is is wonderful. So, um, Monty, did you want to share the Abdo Kids screen, um, or did you want to do that in a bit? Yeah, I can share it. I thought I had, but I'm sorry. It's right here. Okay. Um, let me let me go to that share screen. Mm -hmm. um, and Bree um, just popped a link into the chat for that Abdo Kids. And then here you go, Monty, if you want to just talk to them a little bit about the Abdo Kids site here and the resources that they can find. Sure. So, and I'm sorry, uh, Grace, I didn't have this up when you were speaking, but the Abdo Kids site, as Grace talked about, is it's a it's really a great value add. It's, it's bringing all of this extra content. Um, we know that uh, when you're when you're showing a book, it's not enough anymore just to have a hardcover book and and have that be the end of the story. So in every Abdo Kids title at the back, there's a code, and you can go to abdokids.com and enter the code from your book, and you get a lot of great extra content. There's video clips. Thank you, Grace. Yeah. There there are um, print and craft activities and reproducibles for kids. There's learn more sections so kids can go to vetted sites that we've approved and get more information. And then there's image sliders. If you see that elephant calves title, you'll see those sliders. There's a bunch of new images that you can see, just some great photographs that kids can check out. Uh, but this is a really a, an invaluable resource. If kids are doing reports on animals or biographies or any of the stuff that we do in Abdo Kids, this is a place for them to get more information and, and find a secondary source to use for their report. And it's just a great way to um, have all of that, those extra features and really adds a lot of value to uh, an Abdo Kids title. So you're, you're getting either the ebook or the hardcover or in some cases both, but you've always got access to that Abdo Kids site. So it's just, there's a lot of great content there and Grace and her team do a spectacular job finding really great resources to go, go along with our titles. I, I, it's always surprising to me how many people say to me that they love the Abdo Kids titles, but they haven't even been to the Abdo Kids site. And if, if you like the books without that, you're really going to love it when you see what else is there. So we, we hope you'll check that out. Thank you, Monty. And that's all, um, you know, Monty was talking about that, that secondary source, and that's all going to be safe secondary sources that you are um, leading your students to. And, you know, I, I apologize if I have not told my customers about that. We try to fit so much in um, when we are meeting with you. And that is definitely, um, I saw some of y'all have been using that tool. Um, in the back, Tonya, I saw that, um, but if you were not aware of that additional um, resources in the Abdo Kids, um, then definitely check it out. Um, so we have another pop quiz coming up before we reintroduce Monty. So I am going to uh, flip the page here in a second, give y'all a second to get your chat. So um, pop quiz from Grace's presentation, how many Abdo Kids books in English have been published to date? So we will see if well, uh, okay. <laughs> I got didn't take long. That did not take long. There was a lot. So, okay, Lauren, you are super quick tonight. So you're the, I think the first respondent there. We also have Missy. So we'll do like first, second, third place here. So Missy and Terry, thank y'all so much. So that is 629 um, Abdo Kids English titles that have been um, written and produced and published um, all under Grace's um, watchful eye. So thank you again, Grace, for sharing with us. So um, I would like to introduce our last panelist, Monty. He, you've seen him speak a little bit before, but again, Monty is the vice president and direct sale of direct sales and content. So again, he is my go-to in the company. Um, he is very hands-on with the librarians on the show floor all the time. Um, constantly in meetings just like I would be. So he has a, a great 
feel for the industry and is really the one that comes back and tells at the ABD publishing uh, team kind of what you as a librarian and your readers are looking for. So ABD, uh, Monty, I'd love for you to share with us um, a little bit about your role um, with ABDO and he's also going to share with us some of the new innovations that ABDO has come out with just even in the last six months. So Monty, go ahead, take it away. Thanks, Jamie. And thanks, uh, Grace and Paul for the for the great information about, about ABDO and how the books get produced. And so now that you've seen that process, uh, I'd like to talk about kind of the next steps and what we do with to, to get to that to that phase. So as Jamie said, my role is is direct sales and content. And the way the reason those two things go together is I'm fortunate enough to get to work with our outside sales team. So people that do what Jamie does and bring products into libraries and and provide solutions. And so the reason that goes along with the content piece is in my work with people like Jamie and, and the, the times I get to be hands-on with customers, whether that's at conferences or actually out on appointments with our sales team, is it, it shows me and gives me the, a better feel for what's happening at the ground level and how the instruction actually takes place. And I, I really think of us as um, not, not so much as a book company, but as a content company. And uh, that we take that role very seriously in providing content for the purpose, the specific purpose of instructional support. So I want to share my screen here and show exactly what I mean. Um, uh, is this up, Jamie? My slide? Yes. You're okay. Good. So th this is a, this little slide is, is an example of, uh, actually our, our, our virtual booth for the upcoming School Library Journal Summit, which some of you may attend or have attended or might be attending virtually this, this, this month. And uh, our focus and our laser focus actually right now is this concept of us as instructional support. Um, and the, the things we're gonna talk about, not only at the, at the School Library Journal Summit, but also today and, and the things we think about every day when we're developing content is how to help you deliver that through your instructional platforms, your LMS system, um, your OPAC, um, through the library, whatever channel that is that you're trying to deliver content to students and teachers, that's our focus in how to make the, these three phases um, be held to account. So the first is discovery. Obviously, you can't deliver a hardcover book or an ebook or a database product if kids can't find it and get to it. And so we focus uh, a lot of time and energy and effort on creating environments to make your, your content visible. And that includes your virtual content. A phrase that we like to use is you need to make your virtual visible. And so once we've done that, then the next step is accessibility, making it easy to get to that content. We've removed login steps from every phase in our process. So we've, we were one of the first companies to provide that access. We've also were the first company to provide a download to make sure that um, students who don't have internet access at home or wherever they're going to be have the ability to, to share out that content um, and get to it on their device without a, a connection. And then Lastly, and certainly not least, is, is the concept of shareability, and that's something we're spending an awful lot of time on right now, which is making the content that you own easy to get to through those learning channels, through your instructional tools, like your LMS and your portals, and whatever those systems are to make that easy to get to. So I'd like to, to move through here and just show a couple of those things. Some of you have, have maybe have something like this or have seen something like this uh, board. Uh, this is an example of what one of our customers did who had purchased ebooks. And some of you might have seen what Jamie talked about. It's our instant access program where you buy our ebook and you get the matching hardcover for free. And another piece that we provide is color, uh, color copies of the, of the covers of the books with QR codes on them. So that's what this school librarian did. Actually, she created her own. So she made copy, uh, cover image copies of the books and put QR codes on top. And since then we took her idea and we've, we've made it a scalable concept when you purchase our product. And here's the result. So you get kids and teachers and staff that are coming up and um, scanning the QR codes with their devices and get writing into that content. Again, there's no login in that step. So it's, it's, it's providing a visual access point and really marketing for your program. And again, we feel like 
uh, th this, in, as much as you can accentuate discovery, you're going you're gonna to increase your, your usage. So uh, the next thing I'll talk about, and I'll demonstrate this as well, is just what this looks like when you share our content. So this is a, just a screenshot. And like I said, I'll get into this in a second to show you uh, what it looks like to uh, actually access your, your um, content through the, through the share feature and being able to share it out. And I'll start that by uh, going in and giving you a visual look of what, uh, what, an, what a, this is just a mock-up of what a, uh, maybe your Destiny homepage or your school library homepage could look like. And um, so you've got your learning links here. This could be uh, things, th these little buttons and icons could be your, uh, your learning links for your Destiny Discover page. But again, as you'll see, when I, when I select one of these, it's going to take us right in um, to our digital account again with no login. So we're getting right into our account and you'll see we've got all of our content housed here. And I can select any of these titles and get right in. So I'm going to select this hidden human computers book. And again, it's going to open this for me without a login. And you'll see we've got our save button at the bottom. So I could select that and save this title right to my device. And then the other feature that's brand new for us, and some of you, if you have Abdo content, if you haven't seen this yet, this is live in your eBooks. You select that share eBook a tab, and I've got two options. If I select the email tab, it's gonna pull open my email client and give me the option of uh, sharing that with my, uh, with my um, e whoever I wanna email that to, that would be any licensed user in your building. So here's what that uh, email would look like. And then if we go to the copy link, what you'll see here is I select copy. And now I've, I've officially copied that link. If I want to go into a document, let's say, or a Google Classroom, or that might be your, um, your Seesaw or whatever LMS system that you're using, uh, I can paste that link right to that, that space. And when your users go in to select that, whether that's a teacher, students, or parents, they select the link and here's the experience they get. So they get right into that title again without a login. So, um, you know, we've removing that login step has made it easy to share out this content and we feel like that's a, that's a very important step to be able to, to make sure that your content is being used and, and, um, and shared effectively. So I wanna go back to our Abdo digital page and just move to another product that some of you might be aware of. This is called Abdo Zoom. This is our primary learning research tool for K to three. And I'm gonna open up our STEAM module. And so if some of you are doing STEAM education and STEAM learning, uh, this module, if I do a search here, it, it will pull up all of our articles that are in STEAM. We've got over a hundred articles in the STEAM module. And so think of these as mini eBooks. So if I select one, it's gonna read aloud to me here. So you should be able to hear that. Um, so it's gonna pull that, that article open. And uh, so you'll see across the top here, we've got our tabs. It's, it, the tabs are science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So we're learning about airplanes through the disciplines of STEAM. And this is a read to me product. So if I push play right here, it's gonna read this article out loud. We've got a video clip here. We've got all of these extra uh, features, um, key stats, projects. We can cite our sources. We've got places to play and learn. And again, we've got games and we can print this article out if we wanna do that. But the, the very important feature, and again, this is brand new. So for those of you who have, to, have Abdo Zoom, this feature is live on your, on your product. We can select that share feature. And again, I can copy this link to to airplanes and I can go down here and paste it into my, my STEAM learning lesson plan. And, and when a student or a teacher goes in to select that link, they're gonna get right into this airplanes article again without a login. So it's, it's, it's removing that login step and making accessibility paramount. And so I just wanna go in and uh, show you the second feature. So that, that, that very important feature is the, is the share feature. And then what I wanna show here is uh, a secondary product that we've developed. So 
I'm logging in right now as an admin user. And so any of you who have an Abdo digital account, you'll know this login, you get this login with your, with your account. And when you get logged into your, to your Abdo digital account as an admin, we can go to our uh, My Account page right here at the top. And there are a couple really important features here. The first is this, this link right here. This is what we call our direct no login link. So this is what you would paste on your library page, on your learning links page for Destiny Discover, in your, in your Destiny homepage, wherever you'd like to house your digital content. That's the link that you would paste behind a button or an icon. And it gets you right into your Abdo account with no login. The next thing is our activity report feature. So you can go in right here and you can run usage reports to see how often your content is getting used. Obviously, it's very important with digital content to know that. And then lastly, and this is a brand new feature, we can generate links for all of our digital content. So when I select this option, it's gonna take a second to think here because there's quite a bit of content in this account, but it's gonna give me some options on running an export to um, give me not only the titles and the series and the, the ISBNs and all of that data, but it's also giving me the direct link to all of that content. And that's a, that, that, that feature is very valuable. So if I go here, uh, I can download this CSV file and that will give me the option of opening up this file. And again, it's gonna show me all of my digital content uh, that are, this is all of my, this shows me our Abdo Zoom uh, databases. It shows me all of my eBooks and then it provides the link to go to them. So if I'm in this file and I see that um, I wanna select my Triceratops book, I can select that link and it immediately takes me right to that book, again, with no login. And those are, these are things you could share out with your teachers, with parents and, and show them all of the stuff that's available. And so when I go back here, the other, the other thing I can do again is, is download that, that file and this gives me uh, whoops, I've got to go to my other, this is my Zoom articles link. And this will open up all of the individual articles inside my Abdo Zoom database. So it starts with animals and it'll take me all the way down through all of the animals titles and all of the animales, which is the Spanish version of animals. And we've got biographies as well. And then lastly, but not least, is that STEAM module. So again, all of those links directly into that content is right here. If I wanna get into food chains, um, one click and you're into that specific article and you're ready to, to teach and learn and your students are ready to go. So those are the, those are the two important features that are, that are new for Abdo, the share feature and then the, uh, the title output feature to be able to deliver all of those links directly to your staff. And because let's, I mean, as we discussed, our focus right now is um, delivering instructional support through your, through your instructional tools and technology. And we're working hard to make that efficient. So um, the next thing I wanna go to is um, some of our new, um, our new spring collections. Um, we've got some new, uh, brand new imprints that we're launching for, for the spring, and that's gonna be happening in just two short months. Those titles go on sale December 15th and are deliverable right after the holidays. So uh, first is Kids Core. Some of you might be familiar with our core library um, division, and, or imprint, excuse me. And actually this, this new imprint was Grace's brainchild. She realized that we're doing such a great job of delivering uh, Core, core Library is really designed to provide um, curric, strictly curricular focused content with, with primary resources, with, with uh, extra features where kids can get more information and a lot of text features. And we love that concept, but she, Grace realized and, and we realized through feedback from the market that we, could, we wanted to do that same type of thing at a, at a younger level. So this, 
this imprint is meant to serve the kids in the, in the two to five grade range at a, at a third grade reading set level, so a little bit easier than what our core library does. Core library is really more of a great fit at either upper elementary or middle school level, but this allows us to tackle some of those same curricular topics, curriculum focused topics, but at a, a more elementary level. Next is something we're really excited about. We don't, I don't see anything like this in the market and it's called uh, Abdo Reference. And so the first series is a series of field guides. So we've got mammals, fish, birds, and trees. So we want kids to experience the outdoors, especially now, right? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to keep kids engaged and, and if they, you know, you, we want them outside and, and in, in the natural environment and getting fresh air. And so uh, these books are not only available in a hardcover, but imagine having, having a title like this or a, a series like this that kids could, uh, download or access offline and be out in nature and using these books all simultaneously. Your kids could download this to their iPad or Chromebook or their phone and take it with them and all kids could be accessing everything simultaneously as uh, I'm sure Jamie's talked to you about all of the ABDO titles that we produce are site-wide licensed with multi-user simultaneous access so everybody can be using that stuff at the same time. Next is another series from ABDO Reference on encyclopedias. So we've got dogs and cats and sharks and horses. So we've got some really fun stuff that kids would wanna learn about. Uh, and again, these are, are published at kind of the middle to upper elementary level. So we think they work for, for both elementary and middle school kids. And I, I even think high school kids would enjoy learning about this stuff. Um, and last but not least is a new fiction imprint for us called CLAW. And the point with CLAW is to take um, some kind of spooky content and site-wide licensed fiction ebooks and, and put that in at the secondary level. So these are our fifth grade reading level. The interest level and the appropriateness is really for fourth through ninth, so kind of that middle school level. Uh, I think they also work for, for high school kids maybe who are reluctant readers or reading at a lower level. And obviously when you've got, when you've got um, ebooks, you get the privacy. You've got some kids maybe who are reading below grade level and they, they don't want to be seen with a certain book and with ebooks you get that privacy. And so uh, these are nasty little books. They're spooky, they're scary, they got some great illustrations. But what we're trying to do is, is fill the hole in our lineup and, and most of our fiction goes K to four. And so we're trying to take that next step and provide some content. We're starting with, uh, with six series this or six titles this fall and we hope to expand that um, in, uh, in, in uh, the next fall and, and beyond. So we're really excited about, about what we can do with, um, with, with CLAW. So that, uh, that sort of completes the, my part of the presentation, Jamie. I wanted to just share the, the focus that we have on um, shareability with your digital content. Obviously hardcover, everybody knows how to, how to deliver that. You, you, you get barcodes on them or we, we actually do shelf ready processing as most of your people would know and put them on the shelf and they're ready to go. But we really feel like with digital content, uh, the more focus we can be on helping people foster discovery, foster accessibility, and also promote shareability, uh, the more likely your digital content is to be used and accessed and, and that's important. Wow, thank you so much, Monty. That was a lot of great information. I'm so excited and it looks like the uh, attendees are also excited about some of the beautiful new books that are coming out. And um, y'all, I just wanna reiterate a few of the things that Monty said and really put it into perspective. Um, you know, when he mentioned that Abdo is one of the first companies that came out with the QR code access and we talked a little bit about discoverability, accessibility, and now shareability. That is something that the ABDOs are doing for you as a customer and for students and your teachers for free. Um, and you might not know this, but a lot of the companies right now are either not offering those options at all. They're making it very difficult for you to piece together your own links or they're actually charging you for this. So in addition to already having, again, site-wide multi-user access, you're getting all of these other features that are really going to enhance um, your library discoverability, that accessibility, um, and then also make you the hero at your school, right? So you can reach out to your uh, teachers, you can find out what they're studying, you can easily drop these ebook links into lessons, you can shoot them out to your virtual learners. So I did wanna just reiterate um, just 
the importance of that and really how big of a deal that is, again, because a lot of the other publishers are either not providing it, making it hard to get to, or charging you a bit of money to get to that. So thank you, Monty, so much. Um, yeah, like y'all said, guys, it, you're making it easy. No login, accessible from the MARC records, from the QR code. Uh, Multi-user access, Helen, you're saying it right now, is one of the best things for library budgets, I agree. And I think you've seen the content that ABDO is producing, um, the beautiful books that are coming up in the lineup, and all of the work that this family has done to create that content and make it accessible for you. So thank you so much, Monty. We appreciate that. Um, guys, I am going to pop up our third and final pop quiz here, but I do want um, you to be thinking of all of the great questions. I've seen a couple come in. So start getting your questions, your Q&A um, geared up. I am going to switch the slide here and we are going to do our last pop quiz. So our last pop quiz question is, can you name two new ABDO digital features that are going to benefit you in your library? Somebody's real quick in that chat. So we gotta have two, okay? Oh, hey, Will, nice to see you. Zoom and QR code access. Cindy says direct access and no sign in. QR codes in the website. Gracie, so Monica was too busy saying I love you, Abdo. So accessibility and shareability. Absolutely, guys. So we will go back through the chat. Um, you know, all of y'all are so fast right now, but we will go back through the chat. We'll make sure that Literacy for Texas gets you a nice little care package from ABDO out. Um, a lot of y'all have received some goodies from us already this year, so we will be sure to get that out for you. Um, again, pop in your um, Q&A into the chat or send it to us in the Q&A. Um, I see a couple of questions coming in right now. So while y'all are thinking of all of your great questions, I do want to share with you the ABDO family and ABDO Publishing has been so generous as to give everybody today free trials and then we'll get to some free owned content as well. So if you have your phone on you, um, if you know this now, your camera acts as a QR code reader. So you can either type in this bit.ly and don't forget Bree's popping this into the chat or you can take out your phone, you can scan that QR code and you'll get a free trial to ABDO Zoom. Don't worry if you're not able to get it today, we're sending you an email first thing in the morning and this will be in there. So this is your free trial to ABDO Zoom. Those are the beginning research databases. Be sure to check out that STEAM module. Um, I think that it's a great fit for being able to teach STEM, STEAM and do some makerspace activities while virtual learning. So next, we do also have free eBooks for you. So this is a free trial to all of the ABDO eBook content. Um, same thing, take out your phone, scan that QR code. You can type in that bit.ly or grab it from the chat where Bree's at, and then we'll send it to you again in the morning. And I'll give everybody just a few more seconds, or if you have your phone, just take a whole picture of the screen. That'll get you there as well. I do want to remind everybody that we have continuing webinars. Our next webinar will be two Thursdays from now, and we're going to be talking about diversity audits and reverse diversity audits. So be sure to join us. We'll have the link in the, in the chat and in our email for you to join us there as well. And then um, I do believe I am missing a slide here. So I am going to go grab something for y'all real quick. And I am going to pop in a link to the chat where we can get free ABDO books and those are going to be for you to own. Um, so everybody here is going to get 10 free books to take home um, or take back to your school today. And so these come with QR, um, sorry, these come with the MARC records. So I am going to actually type that in here as free ebooks to own. And there is your link there from ABDO. So those are 10 free ebooks. Um, there's an elementary and middle school and a high school bundle for you. Um, the MARC records are also on that website where you can grab that. So, um, all right, let's open up for some Q&A for our panelists. Um, all right, so first and foremost, Missy from Klein. Um, I think, Monty, maybe this is a you and a Grace question. Um, how does all of the digital content work with copyright as far as sharing it out in a digital format? Yeah, so the, our, our standard license is a site-wide license. So if you've bought eBooks, whether they're 
you know, with the matching free print, or if you've taken advantage of one of our promotions, but they're, but they're for your particular building, you can share that content with any licensed user in, their, in your building, which would be any of your staff, any of your students, or any of your students' parents. So that's what we consider a licensed user, anyone who's part of your school. Um, we don't have any way to prevent you from sharing it any other place, but we, we hope you won't and understand that, you know, that content is meant to be used in your building and, and through your learning tools. Um, I know there was another question too, Holly had, can I address that right away, Jamie? Yes, please, please. So Holly, Holly had asked about, um, you know, sharing it, you know, outside your school domain or IP address. And the same is true uh, because we've removed the login step from every, every place we don't, we know that a student might be on vacation, they might be in Europe or Asia or wherever and, and reading an ABDO book from your catalog or from, you know, your, your library homepage. So anywhere that that licensed user can get access to the content, we're fine with them using it and sharing it. And again, we're just, our expectation is that you're sharing it with licensed users, but a student, anywhere they can gain access in the world, um, they can they can get to that content and use it. What that also means, obviously, is if you're if you put a, a learning link in your Destiny Discover page that is open, uh, anybody might be able to get to that. And if you don't if you're not requiring a login, we're not either. That's our default setting. We we made the determination. Paul Abdo uh, and I had a conversation years ago about about content and copyright, and our ownership came to the ag agreement that if we've got so many impediments that people can't get to content, we're not, we're not going to get any sales anyway. No one, if, if you, if you have a login, if you can't use it because you're not in the right spot or you're not, you're not, you're not able to get to it, that's not going to help anybody. So we've removed all of those impediments, all of those walls for access wherever we can. And we assume that our customers are, are participating with us in that copyright agreement and that license agreement. And so as long as you're sharing that content with licensed users that are part of your site, that works for us. There are places where we do a district-wide purchase where we make an agreement. If you've got 40 schools or whatever that number is, Jamie, you've brought some of those to us where we, we come to an agreement on a, on a price and you're usually that's just eBooks, not hardcover at all. But um, whatever that situation is, then we're saying, okay, now your whole district is licensed for that content then the same is true. You can share that with anyone in your district. If, if, if the whole district has access to a specific title, we, we accept that a teacher in one site might collaborate with a teacher in another site and share out a link to that book because any of them can get to it. And so the thing I would bring up with that is, as, as we talked about tonight, we do sell fiction titles. And most of you would know you can't get fiction ebooks with a site-wide license almost anywhere. And so imagine buying one book that's popular and having 300 kids be able to read it at the same time. And so, um, you know, we're, we're excited about that. We're proud of that. And that's how we deliver uh, our content. And we feel like that's the right way to deliver it. Great. Thank you, Monty, so much. Um, I do have two questions here for Grace. Um, a couple of people want to know if they can share your great eight steps with their students. Um, I think I have a copy of that. So if you are agreeable. Oh, yes. I um, Let me send you. Oh, yeah, you do have the copy. I, yep, I have a copy of it. So I'll get it to Bree and it'll be in your inbox tomorrow morning, guys. And um, second question for Grace is, what about author submissions? Um, does ABDO, is ABDO open to external author submissions? Always, yes. Always. I also wanted to follow up from that last question. Um, okay. We, um, oh gosh, did I just lose my train of thought? It'll come back to me. But yes, we accept okay. author submissions, yes. Okay, and there's, I believe, a place on the website, if I'm not mistaken, um, where- I have a link. There's a link on there. So, Jean, I think um, we can get that to you tomorrow since we're talking to you tomorrow. So, um, Monica and Aldine wants to know where she can download the cover art. So, I do know one of the options is that they can purchase that cover art, but what if they want to create it on their own? What's a good way to get that? So, the, a good way to do that would be to go to our site. You can find any of our covers and or if, um, 
if you wanted to do it even through your digital account for a title that you own, you could pull up the, the JPEGs there. That's usually what, what the, the format you would get. And then what some people have done is just taken the, 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 the link and I showed you the, 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 the page where you can go in and export your title link. You would take those links and you dump them right into a, a QR code creator. The one we use is QR code monkey because why not? And it, that one also puts out a PDF. And that's obviously a, a, a great way to, to, to produce a, a QR code. So you could create the QR code, print it out, and then print out that cover art in color. We give you license to do that when you buy our eBooks. And you, if you buy the eBook and you get the matching print, that's our instant access program. If you do that, we give you license to make color copies of those hardcover books with the QR codes on them. So you're welcome to do that. Um, we do charge a dollar a piece for the QR coded cover art, but if you can spend a thousand dollars with us, we do that for free. And so, you know, if you're, if you're buying eBooks and you, you want to develop a, a collection, uh, it doesn't take long with eBooks to spend a thousand dollars as anyone who's bought them knows, but we would love to create that color cover art for you. Um, you saw that those bulletin boards and, and it just provides such a great visual access point that has had a little bit less value right now, obviously, because not everyone is in school and a hardcover book looks different right now than it did. And then it also looks different than we hope it will again very soon. But right now, there are some people who are looking for more of a digital solution. But that, that piece is something we can build for you. But you have absolute license to do that if you own the content. Thank you, Monty. Um, we have a couple of people asking, when do all of the great promotions for ordering direct expire? Um, there's always a great promotion spring and fall, but the current promotions are set to expire December 31st. Um, and guys, we know that times are tough and rough right now. We know that, you know, sometimes when I get a quote out, it's another three or four weeks until a purchase order is created. So um, we will definitely go on the honor system, um, reach out to your direct rep, they will get that get that through even if you're a couple of weeks after the first of the year. Um, I say that and I think Abdo is agreeable to that. So, um, but we will we will honor that promotion through the end of the year. So, um, there was also a couple of other questions about ordering direct. Um, somebody said that they do have a rep that they like that comes out and shows them books. Is that a direct rep? Um, I'm not sure. Um, who is coming out and showing you books, but there is a difference between um, some reps that maybe carry a distributor that would have ABDO content. Um, distributors do sell ABDO content. However, those promotions, um, the way to stretch and save your, your, your budget is going to be by ordering direct. So there are associates and groups like mine, uh, myself in Literacy for Texas, we are the direct representatives. We can offer you those direct promotions. Um, that does not mean that the person coming out and showing you the books does not offer that, but they do have to be the direct associate with ABDO in order to get those promotions. Um, but you are free to order ABDO books through, um, you know, any venue that you can, but those promotions are offered exclusively for direct purchases. Our, our website has a listing of our, of our representatives too. So you can go to our website under the connect and you can find your your local rep and th that would be the person who is representing us directly and as Jamie said um, offering di direct pricing and promotion um, okay the next question again everybody grace wants those eight steps on on to share with their kids for um, great writing tools so Bree, if you, I know you've been monitoring the chat a little bit more. Are we all caught up on our questions or do we have some more? Even as I'm scrolling, there's 13 new questions here, guys. So Bree, can you, yep, there you are. Um, I think that you got them all. It looks good. Very good. All right, guys, um, I just see a lot of great comments in here, a lot of love for ABDO, and I want to extend that. Um, thank you so much, Paul, Grace, and Monty for joining us. Um, I, I, I think that tonight was wonderful, and I really appreciate y'all's um, participation. Attendees, thank you for participating. Um, you always show a lot of love to the Literacy for Texas webinars, and um, yeah, we'll wrap it up here and be sure to pop any of the uh, any last minute questions into the chat. 
I'll turn it back over to our panelists, Paul, Grace, Monty, for any last minute words. Um, Thanks I, for having us, Grace, yeah. or Jamie, thank you. Yes, it was so nice. And I remember my train of thought, I was in El Paso last September and I got to meet with um, a few grades at a library. It was so much fun. And the last thing I said to them was really any one can write a nonfiction book. You can, anyone can write a fiction book too, but just follow the steps and anyone can do it. Yeah. All right, Jamie, thank you again so much. This was just a wonderful, wonderful evening for us. It's always great to connect with you and all the librarians. So we were, we're honored and we, uh, like Monty said, we want to get access to the librarians and to the students. And so that's our main focus. Our philosophy has always been, let's get the books in the kids' hands and let's get them to, to read because there's nothing better than reading. So Jamie, thank you again. This was great. What a great night. So thank you, Paul. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Monty. Thank you everyone for joining us. We're going to hang on here just to make sure that we're not missing anybody. Thank you for continuing to be active in the chat and have a great night. Stay safe, especially our, our East Texas and Louisiana participants here tonight. Thinking about you. Yeah. All right. Jasmine, you were on. Nice to see you. All right, guys. Yeah, the, the chat can get a little, Grace, I know you were responding there. Paul, I don't know if you were. I was reading them. You were watching, okay. I saved all the, I saved the chat so I could go back and read it. Good, and I'll, I'll send, I'll send y'all the file as well as the recording and everything too, so. Yeah, they were very nice. Yeah. Were fun, what nice people. Yeah. Good industry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Jamie, are you able to do any appointments or is it all virtual? Um, I, I chose to just do all virtual. Um, yeah. I've, got, I've got a lot of people that I think would like to meet. Um, definitely no schools are letting us on campus right now. Um, that's pretty locked down. Um, but I'm pretty conservative with my COVID personally. Um, I was telling Monty yesterday, you know, I, I was telling my husband, I was like, oh, you know, we should get on a plane and go to Hawaii or Puerto Rico. And he turned to me and he said, let's work on getting you into a grocery store first. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, okay, I guess so, you know, but um, no, I, I've been very fortunate that um, a lot of the customers, a lot of the librarians have adapted virtually as well. So they've been, um, my word is, my word is actually grace this year. And I hope that I'm, I'm getting it and giving it. Um, and I think everybody's very, um, everybody's adapted and very understanding that that these are different and tough times. So I've been very blessed to uh, have a lot of virtual appointments, which has been nice. So great. And Good. I've been doing lots of mailings. Um, you know, we got to take since I don't have the gas and the miles, I'm <laughs> deducting mail this year. Yeah, for sure. Um, lots of people are getting lots of goodies in the mail from us, um, which, you know, that's, that's really nice. Everybody likes a little care package every now and then. So, oh, yeah. yeah. And how are your parents doing? They're well, everybody's doing well. Dad is, uh, not cutting his hair until there is a vaccine for COVID. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I want to see a photo. Send pictures. Yeah. He's a ponytail status now, but <laughs> Oh, it suits him like his little laid back lifestyle. So yeah. it suits him pretty well. So that's funny. How's your yeah. brother? He's good. He's doing really well. He just got married actually. So really? that's so exciting. Yeah. Okay. They had a you know an April wedding that they 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 canceled just you know three hundred oh. people in April wasn't wasn't really on the on the agenda and then um they just got married early August. Just, I say just family, you know, my just family is five people. Um, made his wife's just family is like 25 people because um, they've just got a big family. I, I'm assuming like the abdos, but um, yeah, we were, we did all the safety precautions and it was a really, really nice event. So good. Very nice. Yeah. We'll give everybody our best. I will do that. I will do that. And so you're starting to get some bad weather? Yeah, that uh, 
we're already on the Greek alphabet. It's Delta that's coming okay. into the Gulf now. Um, so we'll get, we'll get here, we'll get rain. Um, the coast will get some storm surges and then uh, poor, poor East Texas, our librarians in East Texas, um, that's mainly who Dallas works with. They, they've, they've not only had a rough year, they've had a rough few years. Um, yeah. Even Dallas and I were talking about it. It's hurricanes, flooding, uh, the, the that's where all the oil and gas uh, companies are, and they've had fires, and it's just been a rough couple of years for our, our East Texas librarians. So uh, they will they will persevere. They're always yeah always coming back. So yeah. All right, guys, we got about seven people left on our webinar here. Y'all might have cut out to cook dinner, but we want to give you an opportunity to um, let us know if you have any other questions um, or need anything. Um, I know some people just like to, to listen to us, to listen to us talk for a little bit. So thank yeah. you, Helen. We appreciate it. We're glad you learned, learned a lot there. So, and Paul, we'll, did, Paul, did you check out some of these these in the chat? Oh yeah, I've been. I've just been. just take all of my money. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, did you see that one, Grace? I'm sitting yeah. here in shorts. I see yeah. you have a sweater and turtleneck. It Texas is. weather is great. It is. <laughs> I know. Soda. Oh, yeah. We actually are having a good fall, but. I can just see that it's the snow is coming. I mean, I can. Oh, yeah. just, we're about probably three, four weeks away from some snow. Yep. What What is the weather out right now? Like, is it? Oh, it's been a it's mild beautiful. week. It's beautiful. It's going to be eighty-five okay. tomorrow. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, eighty-five, and Monty will be on his boat. <laughs> I have my boat winterized. That's why it's going to be eighty-five tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, telling Grace that, you know, it's a, the, the popular meme floating around right now is, you know, because we, we're going through these like little cool fronts is, you know, something along the lines of putting, putting the sweater on in the morning so that you can take it off in the afternoon or like be burning up in the afternoon, you know, fake fall. That's it, Jenny. It's a fake fall. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jenny is, I'll, I'll have to brag on Jenny here. She is um, not only a wonderful customer, but she's a, a good friend of mine and a wonderful librarian. And she has um, done a lot for me over the years. She's always my, my go-to pilot person. So I know that if I have a new project or an idea that Jenny's the one that I call and she was very gracious this year. I've, I've really been trying to work on referrals cause that's, you know, how I'm going to get in front of people. So she's always sending out emails to the, one of the largest districts in, in Houston for me and um, getting, getting a lot of good feedback. So I have to brag on Jenny. She's got two beautiful babies and she's just a, a great person. So that's so, awesome. Appreciate you, Jenny. So great. So. Thanks Jenny. Yeah. yeah. Thanks Jenny. <laughs> So, all right, guys, I, I know like two or three of y'all are left on. Jenny, I don't know if you're hanging out just to catch the chatter, if you've got kiddos running around. <laughs> just creeping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's just creeping. <laughs> uh, is it Yilsa? I don't know if you had any questions, Lois or um, Diane. We'll hang on just for another minute or two. Um, okay, yes, Yisla, nice to meet you, Yisla. Where are you visiting from today? I don't know if I saw in the in the early chat. San Antonio. San Antonio. Good. We want to get back to San Antonio. We oh, love, it. love it there. North side. Very good. I know somebody who lives near San Antonio. Amy? Yeah, Brent, my dad. You oh, yeah. and they were asking how my dad was. I don't know if you work with Brent Quick, but that is my father. So he is your abdo rep. There you yeah, go. Direct rep. Thank you. There you go. Oh, he's great. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talked to him this morning. There oh, you there you go. This yeah, doesn't it, seem like a coincidence anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
he might have he might have told you about the webinar i'm sure she's a plant yeah <laughs> i actually got um it was kind of weird i saw a lot of the people coming on that i had gotten quotes out or done work for today so that's always nice seeing seeing everybody come in and give support so thank you Sla. oh you signed up before you knew he was my dad well that's that's uh that's even better we'll take that thank you so all right guys we will okay Thank you, Isla. We look forward to hearing from you. And you can reach out to Brent directly too. Bye-bye. All right, so I saw um, at one point we had 51. Now that includes yeah. the five of us, but- um, I think that's when I started, we had that many and then it kind of went. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, I've seen how librarians respond to you at the conferences. They're just enthralled by all the info you have, really. Yeah. And I learn new things from you. Which I know. Is totally I'm always like, wow, we do that? That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the, Bree... The good, I, the good ideas come from that woman at Literacy for Texas. That's how uh, we get them. Well, I, I hope so. But yeah, Bree was texting me. She's like, I'm learning so much. This is awesome. So good. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be able to be a supermarketer now. I know <laughs> much more. <laughs> No, we really we are excited by the new stuff we're doing on, on the digital side, and that is that is Monty pushing it from hearing from you and other reps in the uh, in our in, on our team. So, Jamie, we appreciate it. Any ideas you have? There, we're we're trying to do them. Absolutely. I want Sometimes. you to know, Jamie. You're you're. I know I can't I can't always make things happen that I want to happen or that you might want to happen, but you are always going to be heard. I hope you know that. I, I do know that and I appreciate that Monty and I know I throw some some crazy things at you sometimes so I appreciate well, no I mean there's you know, we want to there's a lot we want to do but it's you know it's you know we're we're sort of we're a small ship but a big ship you know and sometimes it's hard to turn and and sure. you know that this this pandemic has made it challenging for us you know you you've seen the cuts we've had to our content and our our ownership felt strongly about making those cuts before and hopefully that we can avoid all together any people cuts and right. so we're, we're running with a full team and we're hoping to do that but it's it's challenging at, at, at a publishing house right now because of sure. just what's you know it's challenging in schools too we're all in this together that's a, a perfect example of our uh, symbiosis you know well, and just, just hearing that y'all have done everything you can to keep, you know, no cuts at, internally as well. Um, you know, you, I know y'all have had to make sacrifices, but honestly, to me and, and I think to our customers, it doesn't feel like it. I mean, y'all have produced the same quality content. Um, you know, you, you, I haven't missed any books. I think that there's still a great lineup out there. And then all of the additional you know, digital content that that has been produced to meet the need and, and so quickly too. Um, I don't I don't think people realize how quickly that got turned around, but um, that speaks volumes, I think, to you know the the family atmosphere and to Abdo as a company for sure. So okay guys. Well that kind of things really like pump me up. I like I'm like yes this is awesome. <laughs> so I know. I'm then, exhausted. <laughs> Oh yeah. In about in about twenty minutes I'll start crashing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, this was flawless. It was just so fun to be a part of. Oh, oh I'm gonna need you and Grace to help me move these bookshelves into my office so I can do this from my own workspace. Yeah. Right. You you can use what I have behind me, Monty. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna need a new computer. Uh, well, I will move the bookshelves. Oh those, yeah, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Uh, love it. Uh, well, I hope y'all had fun. Um, we will get the, I don't know if you have a use for the recording, um, but. Yes, we do. Jill um, loves to watch these things back. Oh, does she? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how we all get raises or don't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I always say I'm going to go back and watch them, but I, you know, watching yourself, so, you know, you just sit there and you're like, uh, no, you know, oh my God, I talk like that. <laughs> but 
Um, yeah, we'll send you the recording. Um, I can send you, I, I don't think you need, a, do you need, a, need the slides that I used? I mean, they were just really place filler, so we can, yeah. we can get those. Um, yeah. Definitely send you the chat um, so that we can go through. I always like rereading the chat because it just happens so quickly. Yeah, so, that'd be great. Yeah. I'd love to see that. Oh, and then I'll send you all the attendee list as well. So we can see, um, you know, a lot of people will just register so that they'll get the email tomorrow and they'll go back and they'll watch the recording and grab all the goodies and everything like that. So um, I'll give you those three things. So. so if they watch the recording, do they not see the slides like Monty showing or? They do. They yes. see everything that we showed. Okay. Right. Yeah. They'll see everything that was on the screen um, and everything that was that put up, we put up on the screen and everything. Nice. Oh, that'll be great. So, yes, sir. Well, like I said, guys, I, I really appreciate it. It was fun. Um, I, I love sharing ABDO with my customers and I think that that really brought them a unique perspective. So Monty, thank you. Grace, thank you. Paul, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Um, yeah, Amy your participation so if you need any help with anything let us know we're here or we love doing these because like i said we don't get to see the customer you know right. in person anymore so right. you need anything let us know Will i was going to mention that uh grace goes out on the road but when covid's over and she does some of these presentations so we'll have to get her back out there for you absolutely love that. <laughs> she's like maybe maybe not <laughs> I was scared to do it the first time I did it, but I thought it, it ended up being the best thing in the world. So. so, Grace, for you, was not seeing people's faces, like not seeing customers, was that easier for you to present, or did that make it more awkward? I think it, I thought it was going to be more awkward than it was, but I thought that presenting in person would be horrifying, and it wasn't as bad. You know how you build things in your mind. Yeah. Right. So, okay. it was better than I expected. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I, I told Monty, you know, everybody's going virtual conferences now and I've spent way too much time looking at myself in an empty room. And so like, I need, I need the prompts and I need, you know, I mean, yeah. I, as, as an in-person sales rep, I feed off of emotion and, you know, yeah. cues, body language and everything like that. So, yeah. um, I miss that definitely, but, um. How long has it been, Jamie? You, is this, was this your, are you with us five years now? I was trying to figure that out. I don't, I don't know if it's five, but it's more than three. So let's go with four. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I also, I don't know if I Grace also, knows the story of our Genesis with you, but I'm, I'm sure glad we got you. I'm so glad you're working with us, Jamie. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a pleasure and a lot of fun. So. Uh, we agree all right well hopefully we'll see you soon yes Thanks, guys i appreciate okay. it okay yeah. thank, thank you a lot thank bye -bye. you bye. Yeah, good night all right yeah it was rich meet you yep. meet thank you, you. bye Bree. hi